Hello, welcome to the Ocean County Library as we celebrate Women's History Month. Our presentation today is called Star Inventor, The Life of Hedy Lamar. Hedy Lamar, Beginnings. American actress Hedy Lamar was born on November 9, 1913 in Vienna, Austria as Hedwig Eva Maria Kaiser. Hedy's parents were prominent figures in Austrian society. Her father was a director for the Bank of Vienna, while her mother was a concert pianist. Growing up, Hedy took an interest in acting and took acting lessons with famed stage director Max Reinhardt. Thereafter, Hedy transitioned to films in 1930, where she landed a few small roles in two Austrian movies, Money on the Street and Storm in a Water Glass. This was followed by a film in 1933 that would make Hetty both globally famous and notorious. The movie was a Czechoslovakia piece called Ecstas or Ecstasy in English. The film became notorious for Hetty appearing nude in a few brief scenes and became popular among men who flocked to see it. The scandal of this film even caught the attention of Pope Pius XI, who condemned the film. At the time of the film's release, Hedy was married to her first husband, Austrian munitions manufacturer Fritz Mandel. Legend has it he was so enraged by the film, he tried to buy all the prints to prevent men from seeing his wife nude on screen. Mandel's efforts did not work, and soon the film was released in the U.S., where it was promptly banned in several cities due to the nudity scenes. Hedy's four-year marriage to Mandel was not a happy one. Hetty felt suffocated and isolated in the marriage due to her husband's controlling nature. Additionally, Hetty did not agree with Mandel selling weapons to the Nazi army in Germany. Eventually, Hetty escaped from Mandel by faking illness during a dinner out and went home where she escaped through a bathroom window. Hetty first fled to Paris before settling in London in 1937. It was in London that Hetty would cross paths with famous MGM studio head Louis B. Mayer and her path to Hollywood fame soon came true. Hetty Lamar, Hollywood Fame In September of 1937, Hetty sailed on the cruise ship Normandy to head to New York City. On board the ship, Mr. Mayer negotiated a contract for Hetty to work for his MGM film studios for $500 a week. Additionally, he changed Hetty's stage name from Hetty Kaiser to Hetty Lamar. Lamar is in reference to silent 1920s film actress Barbara Lamar, whom Mr. Mayer had admired from afar. Once the ship arrived in New York City, Hetty was met by a large crowd of local newspaper photographers and journalists. They all hoped to see in person the notorious actress of the band film Ecstasy. The journalists and photographers begged Hetty to lift up her long ankle length skirt to show her knees, but she refused. Hetty wanted the world and the public to know she was a serious actress, not just another pretty face. Additionally, she alerted the press on scene to call her Hetty Lamar, the new stage name given to her by Mr. Mayer. In 1938, Hetty made her first MGM movie called Algiers opposite French actor Charles Boyer. The film was a moderate success, but was quickly followed by two flops, Lady of the Tropics in 1939 and I Take This Woman in 1940, the latter film co-starring actor Spencer Tracy. It wasn't until the film Boomtown in 1940, which co-starred actor Clark Gable, that Hetty's acting career took off and her films began to be hits with movie audiences. Those hit films being Comrade X in 1940, Come Live With Me in 1941, Zig Bell Girl in 1941, Tortilla Flat in 1942, White Cargo in 1943, and The Heavenly Body in 1943. Although Hetty's film career was thriving, she was finding fame to be empty. She grew tired of being typecast in movie roles as a sultry or glamorous woman. Hetty once remarked to a reporter the following, Any girl can be glamorous. All you have to do is stand still and look stupid. She wanted the world to value her mind, 
which had always enjoyed tinkering with materials to create inventions. Hetty's hobby of inventing things would lead her to make a groundbreaking discovery that helped shape the world today. Hetty Lamar, Invention One night in 1940, at a Hollywood dinner party, Hetty was introduced to American film composer George Anthill. The two made small talk about the war and how they would like to help the American troops stop the Nazis. George asked Hetty if she wanted to meet up again, just the two of them to discuss their ideas. Hetty agreed and wrote her phone number in lipstick on the windshield of George's car. Soon after, Hetty and George got together and began to invent technology that would help American soldiers defeat the Nazis. The invention Hetty and George created was an anti-jamming radio device to control submarine torpedoes. Hetty realized by using multiple radio frequencies placed in one continuous signal that the radio controlled torpedoes could not be jammed by enemy armies. They submitted their invention to the U.S. Patent Office under the name of Secret Communications System. On August 11, 1942, it was approved as patent number 2,292,387. The pair then submitted their invention to the National Inventors Council, a U.S. wartime department in charge of evaluating ideas from the public for possible use in military weaponry. Unfortunately, the National Inventors Council passed on their invention. Hetty and George's invention would soon be forgotten until it was later discovered independently by the American company Sylvania, and the technology was used in military warships during the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. By this time, Hetty and George's patent had lapsed and they never made any money off their invention. Hetty's invention would be renamed Frequency Hopping, or commonly known today as Spread Spectrum. Spread Spectrum proved vital for not only military equipment, but the operation of cell phones, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS, and computers. Without Spread Spectrum, our modern digital devices wouldn't be able to communicate with each other or other peripheral electronic devices across the world. The combined value of the SPED spectrum technology used in cell phones, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS, and computers is estimated to be between $16 to $37 billion in the U.S. economy alone. Decades later, Hetty was asked by a reporter from Forbes magazine how she felt about not receiving money from her globally used invention. She stated the following, I can't understand why there's no acknowledgement when it's used all over the world. Never a letter, never a thank you, never money. I don't know. I guess they just take and forget about a person. Hetty's acting career and personal life post-invention would quickly take a dramatic turn. Hetty Lamar, Later Years Hetty's personal life post-invention became chaotic. Hetty got married and divorced five times. Her ex-husbands being Jean Markey, John Loder, Teddy Stouffer, Howard Lee, and Louis Bowles, respectively. In the midst of these marital woes, Hetty adopted a son named James and had two biological children with ex-husband John Loder a son named Anthony and a daughter named Denise. Additionally, by the late 1940s, Hetty's acting career was slowly coming to an end due to fading popularity with movie audiences. Her last major film role was the hit movie Samson and Delilah in 1949. By the mid-1950s, Hetty decided to retire from acting, although not from the celebrity spotlight. In 1965, Hetty was arrested and charged with shoplifting at an L.A. department store. The charges were dropped and Hetty sued the department store, but her suit was dismissed in court. In 1966, Hetty, in need of money, authorized a publisher to release an autobiography about her life. The book was called Ecstasy and Me, 
My Life as a Woman. Sadly, the autobiography was far removed from telling the story of Hetty's life or her career in acting. Instead, it solely focused on her sexual relationships. Hetty was mortified, and she sued the publisher and the ghostwriter of the autobiography for misrepresentation. Woefully, her suit against the publisher and the ghostwriter failed. During the 1970s, Hetty was in the news again, this time for a lawsuit against comedic film director Mel Brooks for his movie Blazing Saddles, in which a character was named Hedley Lamar. Hetty felt it was too similar to her name, and the lawsuit against Mel Brooks was eventually settled out of court. In 1991, Hetty once again was accused of shoplifting, this time from a local pharmacy store in South Florida, and she was given a year of probation for the incident. Hetty, in her final years, lived alone in the suburb of Orlando, Florida, away from family, friends, and her fans. Hetty was suffering from blindness and rarely towards the end of her life ventured outside her home. On January 19, 2000, Hetty died, but her career in acting and her mind for invention were soon to be recognized. Hetty Lamar, Honors and Legacy. In 1997, three years before her passing, Hetty received the Electronic Frontier Foundation Pioneer Award in recognition of her spread spectrum invention. In 2012, writer Richard Rhodes released his biography about Hetty's life, career, and inventions called Hetty's Folly. In Rhodes' biography on Hetty, he focused on other inventions she created during her life, such as helping American aviator Howard Hughes streamline his designs and inventing a cube when dropped in water would make a carbonated soda drink. In 2017, film director Alexandra Dean released her documentary on the life of Hedy Lamar titled Bombshell, The Hedy Lamar Story. The documentary was critically acclaimed and featured Hetty's voice detailing her life story. The director Alexandra was able to obtain Hetty's voice from the tape recorded interview sessions Hetty had with a reporter from Forbes magazine. Recently, in September 2021, the Met Gala held their delayed Costume Institute Ball. At the event, actress Emily Blunt wore a sparkling white Miu Miu dress made of crystals and a star-studded crown headpiece. The outfit, according to Emily, was created as an homage to Hedy Lamar's costume she wore in the 1941 film Zigbell Girl. As we have seen, the life of actress Hedy Lamar was one full of many adventures. New generations of the public continue to discover Hedy through her films and inventions. Hetty will forever have a lasting impact on the world for years to come. Hetty Lamar, Sources. All the information presented today was found using the Ocean County Library's databases. These databases are free to use at home or in the library at any of our 21 branches with your Ocean County Library card. Hetty Lamar, Image Sources. All the images shown in this presentation today can be found at the following sources. Hetty Lamar, Materials at the Ocean County Library. Check out the Ocean County Library's website to find books, films, and articles about Hetty Lamar. To search our catalog or access our databases, please visit the Ocean County Library's website at www.theoceancountylibrary.org. Thank you, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation at the Ocean County Library. Support public libraries. Like, share, and subscribe for more great videos.